As Noel mentioned, my name is Steve Carney. I'm the Director of Product Management for Tyco Secure Products Video. What we're going to talk today a bit about is active surveillance. And what does that mean, active surveillance? When we think about the market, uh, we, think of, we break down the market uh, really in sort of two main ways from the user perspective really starts with that active surveillance. What does active surveillance mean? It means, a, uh, in other words, a security guard. Primary tool of their day job is video. They're covering important assets and they're tracking in active live scenarios. What matters to them? Performance, ability to move from live and recorded very quickly. We'll talk a little bit about exceptional situations, why that really matters in certain verticals. But on the other side of the equation, and just to put it in perspective, the event-driven. Event-driven customer, if you're an integrator, is probably about 70% of your work. Somebody whose day job is not to use video, they're an office manager, a small business owner, a clerk, they have to get in and out of the video very quickly, get on with their day job. So for them, it's not necessarily about performance, it's about ease of use. So, we, so it's not a one-size-fits-all market. So we, now you also get a combination of users. So think about a department store chain. They may not have a lost professional on site watching PTZs, catching shoplifters, but they may have a regional overlay of active surveillance. So they're the sort of a combination case, but we're really going to focus on that active user for a second. Now, what does that mean? Where do they tend to be? Think about it in terms of poker chips, babies, and monkeys. Right? That makes sense, doesn't it? It's mostly about the value of the assets they're protecting. The more valuable they are, the more intensive the surveillance is going to be. The millions of dollars that come into a casino every day and out to their bank matters a great deal to them. Baby wards within hospitals, one of the most secure areas in all of healthcare. And then the monkeys, animal test facilities, pharmaceutical test facilities, these guys are putting tens of millions of dollars in their testing. And they know that there are plenty of animal, advocates, animal rights advocates out there that would like to free their test subjects. That happens, tens, $20 million gone, years of research gone, possibly on a new drug. They are very intensive surveillance users. So what really, uh, what really matters to them? We can think about this on a continuum. That small business owner down on the far end, cares about getting in and out of that video, on with their day, all the way through to loss prevention retail. You know, some of our customers, I'm gonna talk about a particular use case, some of our customers in loss prevention actually don't get paid a salary. That security professional gets paid on bounty for shoplifters they catch, imagine that. You care about the performance of your equipment when that's how you're getting paid. Financials, so, large trading houses, they may, have very, they may have a lot of intellectual property in the methodology in which they use to trade. We've got customers that are so security conscious about that, that they have IP inside their building and analog outside. So there's no possibility of a network attack into the building from, a, from an IP solution. So really security conscious. Critical infrastructure can also be airports. Uh, those, uh, those medical test facilities I mentioned, and gaming. So that tend tends to be how that active surveillance plays out. But we're also taking into account the, the global th security threats that are in progress now. I mean, we all know about the air travel from the attacks from 9-11 and on, but even up till today, uh, the Kenya Mall attacks, and I was, uh, I was actually on CNBC's Power Lunch yesterday talking about soft target protection in an active shooter environment. We'll talk about that a little bit in a second. But anything can happen, and that means the next day there's a new security threat, and we in the community, whether it's integrator, whether it's security director or manufacturer, now focuses differently. A great example of that, this last one, sporting venues. Who's been to an NFL game this year? Were you able to carry that bag in, sir? Well, I took an ID and that was it. ID and cash. <laughs> Clear bags only. Ladies can't even take in pocketbooks. They have these clear bags. You can see their makeup and everything else you got there. That's the NFL. Why? Boston. Right? So the threats are evolving. The defenses are evolving as well. Now, the good part about this is IP has come a long way to help a lot of this. We're going to go back to that active shooting environment, analytics, 
gaining the situational awareness in an uncertain situation, in a quickly evolving, rapidly evolving scenario. When we think about this in the context of soft targets, by definition, they're soft because the people who have guns are somewhere else. They're not there. So now something goes on, it's very difficult to stop that attack before it starts, right? You're, if you do, if you can, it's within seconds. And once it's started, the element of surprise is gone. Situational awareness, how many, where are they, is critical. That's where analytics can really come into play, and we'll talk about that in a second. Now we can mobile and remote view what's going on. Nice element to gain that understanding of the security guards in a, in a fluid situation. They can see what's going on now at the command center. You can reduce some installation costs with IP. Network redundancy can really allow people to back up, particularly in the active surveillance market. They want to very often want that redundant. They want failover, redundancy, archiving. IP helps in that regard. However, there are two elements to keep in mind. If this is a market you're in, or if you're in the process of uh, going from analog to IP in, a, in an active environment, latency. And it's not just camera latency, it's monitor latency as well. Talk about that more in a second. And of course, network security. The latency issue, I think we all know that PTZ has some latency concerns in the IP area. And one of the things we've done here at American Dynamics, based on our years of leading PTZ work with the speed domes, is release the Illustra 625 HD PTZ. And what we focused on with that is getting that latency as low as possible. And why does that matter? Well, in the active environment where that person in the loss prevention center at that department store is getting paid on bounty, they can't lose that target. That, 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 that camera has to go exactly where they want it to go all the time. So we went out and said, okay, where else has latency mattered? Where else can we learn, can take some lessons learned? NASA and the Air Force, when they moved from hydraulics to fly-by-wire, had a great deal of latency that they didn't have in the hydraulics days. So they went through a number of different tests to find out exactly how low you could get latency before it essentially virtually disappeared from the human eye. Now I can't say the 625 can fly an aircraft, but I can say it's the lowest latency, fastest PTZ in the world. And that's one way that you can help the active surveillance customer by eliminating that PTZ. But it goes beyond that. And in that control room of that retailer, I learned something that day. And I learned that when they are going from the analog CRT to an IP LED or LCD screen, there's latency. There's no latency in that CRT. They looked at me and said, I can't do my job. It takes me three seconds to switch a camera on this new, uh, this, this new monitor. I can't do my job. I said, well, I'm sorry, but they don't make these anymore. So we're going to have to find a middle ground. So when you're thinking about that active surveillance environment, and particularly moving from analog to IP, the, the, the quality of the monitors matters. You, you would never have thought that. But switching the difference between switching three seconds and, a, and switching back and forth cameras and a second and a half is the difference between them being able to do their job and not being able to do their job. Just something to keep in mind. That situational awareness, critical in those soft target, fast moving situations. How can a VMS help? And one of the things we do in our Victor client is we unify a number of different elements of our security solution. Intrusion, access control, and video. So what can happen? One way one can gain a, an upper hand ahead of time, I think we can think of an attack recently where this occurred, somebody comes in through an exit, breaks through a door. Well, if you've got some level of access control, you know, now know you have a, a, a forced door. And if a camera is on that spot, it can tell you who's there. And if you think you're gonna get too many false positives, you can lay down a little trip wire now with an analytic and make it go one way. When you have an exit in a movie theater, everybody should be heading that way. If you have one person heading this way, you've got a problem. If you see that and they've got a big black bag and they look like the Joker, you may have a couple of extra seconds that you wouldn't have otherwise. Now, that's probably not going to be the case most of the time. Most of the time it is a mall, it is an open area, and the attack has started. What's going to happen? What's, what's, the, what's the optimal security scenario in that active situation? And it's really about the ability and what we call that within the integrated side but also the time synced investigation tools so you're in the security center you get a call we have a shooting okay it started on the first floor 
you're probably not getting all the details. You go to those cameras, you can see a shooting occurred, but the shooter is not there. They've moved on. Now, you're calling the authorities. What do you think the difference in the reaction is going to be between the authorities getting there and not knowing how many people, where they are, and what they're doing at the time they get there versus, I know I have three people, they both are on the second floor and they're moving north in the building. That's a fundamentally different thing, isn't it? So, time syncing that video when you know where it started but they're not there anymore, and I encourage you to go back and maybe get a demo of Victor's investigator mode, you can bring up all of the, all of the cameras in the area and then start moving them forward and backward all time synced until you catch what you're looking for. Now, it may have happened two minutes ago, but now you can start moving it forward and folding in all the other cameras around and put the timeline together very, very quickly, gaining situational awareness when seconds matter. It's another, th another thing to keep in mind in, in, uh, in covering sort of soft targets uh, in active surveillance. Video push, as I mentioned in the IP arena. You've got security guards out there. They may be an issued smartphone, smartphones. You can take that video, now that you know what's going on, to security guard on, on the third floor, push it and say, this is what's going on in the second floor. As opposed to saying, yeah, they're in front of Macy's. Uh, yeah, they're, they're armed. Uh, they're, moving, uh, they're moving north. Right? That person having the live video is far more powerful than being told something, having them run down the hall, and the situation is different by the time he gets there. Video vault. In the active world, you got, you're, you're, you're protecting an asset. It's very important. You catch video you care about, being able to vault that, which means take it out of the, record, the typical recording and put it in a place where it not, will not be recorded over as that 20, 30, 40 days of, of, st of storage gets rolled over. Video vault. And I've already really mentioned the integration of access, access control, in particular, uh, intrusion as well. But layering the different attributes of the security nodes and making them work together is very important to be able to maximize the value of a security system. We we'll wrap up on network security as well. That's always, that's always a key important uh, element, particularly for the you know, financial institutions, banks, trading floors. Encryption, uh, network port management, very critical. But another element is how the operating system is managed. And one of the things we've done, because where, where, where hackers come in are the, are the variety of different drivers and inputs to an operating system. Well, a video surveillance system doesn't necessarily need every part of an operating system. It doesn't need all of Windows, right? Windows is meant to do a lot of things. It wasn't particularly designed for physical security. What we've done is take a Linux OS and stripped it down to the kernel and implemented only the elements of that operating system that are required for the surveillance job, which means the 80% of the rest of the stuff in an operating system doesn't have to be downloaded and it's not there to be attacked. Another thing to keep in mind in, in high-risk active surveillance environments. So that's the overview of some of the things we'd like everybody to keep in mind when you're looking at into the active surveillance, when you're in gaming, when you're in critical infrastructure, loss prevention, things that you may be, may be thinking of, like network PT latency, PTZ latency, that's obvious. Take a look at the manufacturers doing a good job in that space, but there are things that you may not have thought about, like I mentioned, the latency in a monitor. Who would have thought a monitor doesn't switch fast enough, and in some cases, that's true. So. As I mentioned, my name is Steve Carney. I'm the Director of Product Management. I'll be over here to answer any questions. If you have any questions now, we can cover off on them. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much.